everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I'm taking a little break from building. We're over at our workbench over here. And what I thought I'd do today is we're just gonna have a little bit of fun. Today I'm gonna show you a kit from the 1950s, kit from the 1960s, and a kit from the 1970s to give you guys an idea what modeling was like back then. I know, I know some of you were around for those times and remember them, but there's a lot of new modelers out that haven't got to see what old, old kits really look like. So we're just gonna have a little bit of fun today. Take a look at those. 1958 catalog from Ravel we're going to take a look at. And like I said, this is just for fun. We're going to see what's inside all that stuff. So, let's get started. So what I thought I would do today, guys, is I was in the process of building up a, uh, a modern day kit, we're going to call it, one that was actually produced this year. And I went in my back room to get some supplies for it, and I found a box that had these very old plastic model kits in there. Now, having a hobby store, I buy collections all the time, and sometimes I get some very old not necessarily rare, but just very old kits. And we, we've got a little assortment, kind of like a uh, harken back to older times uh, when model kits were really a lot more basic than they are right now. And it makes me think, you know, there are sometimes people get on the internet and complain about certain kits and then look back at these old ones right here <laughs> and realize you really don't have a heck of a lot to complain about. So I've got three American kits right here from Monogram. This kit is produced in the uh, the 19... It's got a 1960s copyright, but the uh, the flyer inside says 1971. We're going to show you inside all of these too, but just to give you an idea, this one has a copyright date of 1960, and then this Aurora kit of a Fokker D7 is from the 1950s. And then also to top it off too, we'll kind of just quickly go through it. This is a 1958-59 Ravel catalog and showing you the different kits that were available in 1958 and 59. Now this is just going to be a fun video. We're just going to look at these and open them up, show you what parts used to look like and uh, just have, like I said, a little bit of fun. I'm taking a little break from the build I'm doing right now. And was just, I sat here for like 30 minutes just looking at all these old kits and was just kind of mesmerized about the way things used to be. So let's have some fun and take a look inside. The very first nostalgia kit we're going to take a look at is a kit from Aurora. And as for date on this now, the box itself has a copyright date of 1958, but when I show you inside on the instructions, the instructions have a copyright date of 1956. So sometime in the late 50s this was produced. Now, like I was telling you earlier, this was made by Aurora, and it is their quarter scale, which is 148th, their Fokker D7 World War I airplane. And this is back when Aurora was in Long Island, New York, made in the USA. You don't see that very often anymore. And let's just say we've got a, a Wingnut Wings kit right here of a Fokker D7. And it's come a long, long way from this to this right here. And let's take a look inside this one. First of all, first of all, I should show you the box, actually. This is back when boxes were made by hand. As you can see, they've, they've got this, basically, it's a giant cover sticker that came around the outside edge here. And these were all hand done. Uh, Every one I've seen has been a little bit different, but you can see how they, they've done all the box on that. And there, like I said, that's a 58 uh, number on it. And down here, the copyright on this one says 1956. And all of this stuff was all still made in the United States. And you are looking at the complete instructions on this kit. So it is one page of instructions. Compare that to the Wingnut Wings kit that I just showed you a second ago there. Kind of interesting. And then, of course, down here, advertising for their glue. 10 cents a tube and 25 cents for their fireproof plastic cement in a bottle there. And then the other side was just advertising some of the other kits that they had coming out. Some tanks, some different airplanes, things like that. And let's just... Now, a bunch of these kits have... Or excuse me, a bunch of these parts have fallen off the sprue. The kit is uh, close to 65 uh, years old, possibly. So we'll just kind of quickly show you how some of these look. Here, we'll move this out of the way. So we've got our prop, our exhaust. I'm not quite sure what this part... This probably some part with the machine guns get attached to that based on having built that uh, Fokker DR1 recently has a part similar to that in there and you guys remember this if you've been building for a while 
all this flash right here. It's very rare that you see a kit with any flash today, but it was uh, very commonplace back then. And just having to go through and remove all of that flash before you could even get started on building the kit. Then we got our tail surfaces right here. And, and we've got our top wing. Now, one thing you're going to notice on all of these kits is the uh, the markings are pre-molded into the paste. So if you there are decals inside here, but if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and paint right over that, which I'm assuming back in the the 50s and 60s, painting probably wasn't as top on the list as it is right now. So probably a lot of kids just built these up the way they were, played around with them until they broke, and then got rid of them and got a new one. But wing is one big piece there. And actually, not molded that badly. I mean, the wing itself here is in pretty good, pretty good shape, I would say. And we've got our fuselage here. You know, give you an idea of size. Had uh, had pins on both sides, so you could uh, line it up to get the thing lined up nicely. You can see there's the Fokker D7 marking with the uh, serial number 5125, and then of course the. Uh, decal area all lined up but even this kind of stuff right there the mere fact that they put the little ports where the the rigging lines would have come out kind of cool um, we've got our wheels and our little wheel wing down there still lots of flash on top of that we've got our bottom wing and I, this stuff right here it looks rough but it's actually completely smooth so it's probably where you know part of the plastic was injected into the mold and it kind of just made that ripple pattern, but it's completely smooth. And then these are the decals. Pretty basic. This is the uh, this is your engine sprue right here. So, or engine pieces, two engine pieces, as you can see, a left and right half. And then of course, oh, there was that exhaust piece too. That's true. We do have that exhaust piece. The, these are the the uh, trees that had some of the parts on it. He had a couple of couple of dudes inside there. I don't know what the heck this guy's doing. I don't know if he's trying to start the prop or run across the wing or just get the heck out of the way of the airplane. And then of course a pilot figure. Pretty pretty rough looking. And then an assortment of other things. And take a look at these uh, these machine guns, guys. And then when we open up this wing nut kit. I'm not gonna pull open the bags on this one right here, but I think there are more parts on the engine sprue for wing nuts Fokker D, uh, D7 than there is in the entire uh, Aurora kit from 1956-57. And then a couple other assorted pieces, the tail, and they gave you a little piece of ground with two uh, chalks on it here to hold your airplane out. So you probably could glue it right up against that keep the plane nice and stable from falling over. So pretty pretty interesting stuff right here. It's like I said, it's fun to look at these these old kits and realize what people were working with or basically kids at that time were working with in the 1950s as it came to building models. Next up in our little uh, nostalgia run here is a kit from Ravel. Now this is when Ravel was still in the United States, in uh, actually Venice, California. Pop this box top off here. And same thing, same kind of box. I guess all the boxes were made the same back then. Very, very sturdy, very thick type of cardboard for the time. Now you're getting into obviously a much more complicated kit for the time. This is actually in 40th scale as you can see here. A little different and a few more types of steps or a few more steps in this kit than the uh, the Fokker D7 we just showed now as you heard me say that this was in 40th scale and many of you are probably thinking that's a very odd scale many of you may know some of you may not know this is box scale for this time period so they used very generic size boxes and then they would create the kit to fit in the box. That's why you have all these oddball scales. And when we look at the uh, the catalog in a little bit too, you're gonna see that too. The scales are just all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason most of the time how they were doing it, at least with Ravel. And we'll just kind of quickly take a look at the, uh, the plastic inside here. And I have to say, 
this is actually molded pretty nice for the time period now. There are the individual rivets inside there that they've molded. And feeling it, uh, yeah, this is actually um, not raised panel lines. So those are all recessed panel lines on that. And actually a decent sized kit. You've got our decals, which have yellowed ever so slightly <laughs> over the last uh, 50 odd years. The little, uh, the little master modeler stamp. Yeah, see this is the one that is dated 1961 on the inside there. Some of the trees. The, the flash is actually not bad on that. Just a uh, little bit here and there right where the, the part would come off the runner or the tree. Some of the wings. The wings actually worked on that. And that was another thing that you'll see a lot of these older kits. The little gimmick was some of the parts would actually work on them. Um, you had an indiv yeah, a complete engine here too that you would be able to install and paint up if you wanted. Kind of different. We've got our wheels and the rest of the, uh, the wing pieces. And then kind of a cool stand of a piece of earth clear earth with the uh, the little stand in there you can imagine little kid back in the 60s building this up and putting it up on his uh, his desk there and then finally these parts had all fallen off we put them in a little baggie a while ago so I wouldn't lose anything pilot figure like I was telling you you're pretty rough on the figures and then just a bunch of other accessories and I wanted to show you this too the cockpit or the canopy excuse me is uh, Pretty thick, but but still fairly clear. Now, don't forget, this one has been beat up in a bag for the last 50 years. But uh, you can imagine it being not too bad. Dip that in some uh, future floor polish. Probably have it pretty decent. And then they had actual... Oh, that's kind of interesting, too. The canopy frame was molded separately. And I am really shocked that this fragile little piece has survived that long. And then just think about it. You'd be able to just drop the, uh, the canopy up inside there or maybe up on top. Yeah, it's like kind of like probably something like that. That makes it a lot easier to paint that canopy. So that that gives you kind of an idea what this one looks like. Let's look at the uh, the last kit now. And the last kit we're going to take a look at is a monogram kit now. And this is when Monogram and Ravel were not one company. Has a uh, copyright date of 64 in 1967. But like I was telling you earlier, there is a flyer in here dated 1971, so I'm assuming the flyer was to advertise something, so that was when the actual kit was made. Now, before we actually get into this, I want to hear from you guys. Tell me, what was your very first kit? And I'm going to tell you right now, mine was, it was probably 1975. I was uh, five years old at the time, and the very first model kit I can remember building was the P61 Black Widow. And building that kit up, and uh, building it up with my uncle, and putting just black spray paint all over it, putting thumbprints in the side with glue and paint, but having a ball flying it around my grandmother's house when I was a little kid and eventually smashing it up, I'm sure. And, and you know, when I got a little bit older, we'd catch them on fire and light them and throw them after we were done with them. But go ahead. I want to hear from you guys. Tell me what your very first kit was and about the time, time frame you built it up in the uh, description down below or in the uh, comments down below, I should say. So let's take a look at a 19, late 60s, early 70s kit from Monogram. First of all, the boxes changed, as you can see right here. They went to the individual flaps like we see now. And uh, this is a 30-second scale Porsche. And this was the, the piece of advertisement that I was telling you about, which was very, very common back in the, uh, the 60s and 70s, always trying to get you to join some club. And this one right here was you'd get a free uh, Red Baron ro um, rat rod or whatever that thing is there, Red Baron uh, show car. Uh, like I said, 1971 on it there. And for only 10 cents, you'd start your science adventure program. And then it was like a dollar to actually get into the club. So... Kind of, kind of cool. I, one of my things that I love to look at is real old advertising because it, it's always cool the things that they were trying to, to sell to you or the way that they would advertise to you. It's just just really cool. I've, I've got quite a bit of old advertising I keep anytime I get any of that stuff. So that's kind of cool to see that. The instructions got a little bit better right off. You can see that they're uh, actually pretty basic on this one right here. But... A little bit more step-by-step -step with pictures on how to uh, put things together. 
and we're not going to spend too too much time on this one right here just kind of give you an idea of what the uh, the kits look like so here's your your molded chassis 1964 stamped into it uh, here is your body honestly not bad looking at all. I mean, obviously they don't hold a candle to the new kits today. You know, you a brand new Tamiya kit or something like that. But for the time, these are these are pretty nice looking here. We've got our our figure, <laughs> or most of a figure. His, his head sitting right there, but a two piece head and a little bit of detail on the face. Not too bad. Clear parts. Those are always real thick on all these kits from that time period. Um, our decals, which are yellowed a little bit, probably would fall apart once they uh, get put in water. And our rubber tires, which this is kind of cool. These are still very flexible. Many, many times, like I was telling you earlier, I buy collections all the time. And it's the worst thing is when you buy one of these old kits and one of the wheels rested on the clear parts. Because the, uh, the rubber tires would leach out a chemical that would eat right through your clear parts and just just destroy them right then and there so luckily all these tires were separated in there and um, didn't damage any of the clear parts on this kit we've got our little tub here oh and then then i don't know when they started doing this but these are some of the first chromed pieces so you can see we, you actually got chrome wheels inside there and you can see the part where they actually clipped it on and dipped these so that's yeah, kind of cool like that now, the last thing we're going to take a look at after we put all this away is we're going to take a quick look at the 5859 catalog. Like I said, it's just really cool to see all the, the cool stuff and the advertising inside. So let's take a look at that. And here it is. This is a authentic uh, Ravel catalog. So it is 61 years old. 10 cents. They actually charge for catalogs back there. And do you see uh, six of the most thrilled kids in the world <laughs> building models right there? I don't know what they were going for with that look, but the stoic look each one of them has on it. And then let's just take a look at, like I said, just some of the stuff that was available. So lots of time period airplanes, basically. Uh, world War II wasn't over that long ago, but you can see we've got lots of modern for the time jets. So the uh, the hundred the F-100 series, uh, F-84, the Skyhawk. And I'm sure many of you guys have seen both of these airplanes right here. In fact, Ravel has just reissued this kit again. Um, their Fokker triplane. These are in 128th scale. And, oh, that's the other cool part, too. The prices are in this catalog, too. What the retail price. So the Fokker DR1 triplane from in 128th scale. Don't forget now. Scale from authentic blueprints. So, you know, that's a good selling point right there. <laughs> uh, but $1.98 uh, retail for the... Uh, for this, both the SPAD and the Fokker uh, DR1. I think that's really cool. And then look at some of the other prices on here. So most of these other kits, uh, they don't have the scales on them, but so they're probably that box scale, like I explained to you guys. All of these kits were only 89 cents each retail. And this final one, this Russian Flashlight Yak 25, was 98 cents. So, And this kit, this kit has come back how many different times over the years? I just had one of those recently... Um, repopped, you know, multiple times when it, the Sikorsky S, S55, or excuse me, no, that's this one right here. The Air Sea Rescue Helicopter with the big orange band on it, 98 cents. B24J Liberator for 98 cents. Then let's look, and even the big giant bombers. Now, granted, they were box scale, but still 98 cents for all that stuff. Then we have our, our, uh, what do you call it? Uh, modern airliners. Airliners. I couldn't get that word out. It's right there in front of me. All your airliner kits. And 1958. This is the how they thought we were going to go to the moon and something like that. This three-stage rocket to the moon. And turned out a little bit different, I'd say. And then, all, of course, all of our missiles. The snark. Uh, the ships. There we go. Once again, all box scale. This, I think this is still the same Missouri that keeps coming out from Ravel. You know, 50 some odd years later, it's still the same one. $1.98 back in the day. And then the Jersey, the Sullivans, a guided USS Nautilus, guided missile submarine. The Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And the patrol boat there. 
And this is kind of cool too. These, they actually went ahead with the, uh, the actual box art rather than the actual picture of the model. And over the years, I have actually seen some of them in the original box art come into the store. Some of them are reprints, but... Tall sailing ships. And then the armor. This is something a little bit for me. You guys know I like to build armor a lot. Would not want to build any of these kits, I have to admit. I'd like to have the boxes and the kit itself, but uh, not much of a desire to build up any of these. Oh, and then, of course, the cars. You can't forget about those. And I know this kit came out, was reissued just a few years back by uh, Monogram Ravel. Or Ravel Monogram, I should say. And some of their other little gift sets that had paint and other stuff inside of it. And finally, on the back. I guess uh, Ravel had a partnership going with uh, with Disney at the time. Because Perry the Squirrel was on here for $1.98. And the Koala Bear... And then the Beagle Puppy, Frisky the Beagle Puppy. So, And then they looks like they had a line of HO trains and stuff as well, too. So very, very interesting stuff. Like I said, this is just for fun, guys. We're just taking a look at all these old kits. Um, I love looking at this stuff. And if, if you guys enjoy something like this, like I said, go ahead and tell me. I get all kinds of rare old kits like this or, or semi-rare old kits all the time. And if I get anything really, really cool and interesting, I'll certainly share it with you guys. And don't forget, go down below in the comment section and tell me what uh, what your very first model kit was. what uh, And, you know, when it was and how it came out, actually, too. So, hey, I want to thank you guys, as always, for watching. And please stay tuned, because we have many more videos coming.